great day to worship God, to celebrate. And as I said, we're going to change things up a little bit. So later on in the service, we're going to continue to worship through song. We're going to worship through word right now as we celebrate what God is doing in this church. Each and every week, we have been talking about ways in which we are ministering around the world and in our own city. And instead of a video this morning, you're going to get the live version of that as we talk about what it means to serve God right here in Anchorage. And we'll get to that here in just a moment. Before we do, I want to invite all of you to take a moment and fill out some cards. And those cards are our C2 cards. And on these cards, you can let us know you're here so we can know how to pray for you. You can let us know how we can be a part of your life by helping you know how to get plugged in here, how we can help you equip, how we can help equip you to live your everyday life for Christ. That's why we're here, and we want to help you in that endeavor, so fill that out. Also, that sheet, which is the uh, ask card, doesn't say anything on it. It's just blank because what's going to go on there is your prayer request, and encourage you to do that and place that on the wall as you go out, some nails. You can push that on there. And it's a wonderful thing to walk by occasionally and just read all those prayers that people are asking God to answer. And we know from John chapter 15, verse 7, that he's faithful to do that as we remain in him and his word remains in us. Ask what we wish and it'll be done for you. This is Jesus' promise. And so I encourage you to be praying about these things, for praying for each other. And each and every week I've invited you uh, to turn in a prayer request. I want to give another invitation today, and that is I invite you to walk by that wall and pick three or four, whatever you can hold in your brain, pick three or four and actually write them down for someone else's prayer request. People have put those requests out there. Why don't you go by today and just pick three or four of them. There's no names on them, at least most of them. And you can pray for those requests as we pray together as a church. So there's a couple pieces of paper to fill out. And during this time, and just a moment as, as you hear about what we're doing, this will be a great time for you also on the C2 card to write down questions you may have about the ministry or write down, I want to be a part of that ministry. A uh, great way to do that. Now, where do you put these cards? Some of you already know this, some of you don't. The green wall on the back, uh, there are some baskets with yellow signs above them. Uh, place those cards in the baskets, and that way we can have those, uh, th those cards so we can respond to you and pray for you as you turn those in. Why don't you pray with me as we ask God to speak through us to, his, to us through his word. God, it is an amazing thing to be here today. A great way to be a part of what you're doing here at Rabbit Creek Church. God, as we sing, as we greet, as we preach, as we fellowship together, we thank you for these experiences. God, as we go out into this world that you've called us into, that you have formed us and made us to live within. We pray that we would impact lives, that, that while we are about those daily tasks in our homes, in our places of work, in our parenting, in all that we do, God, I think that you would help us to take those everyday activities and turn them to you. And God, when you call us out into those unexpected, when you give us those opportunities that are out of the routine, I pray that we'd be able to step up to the plate and be ready to engage in the lives that are before us. God, give us eyes to see and ears to hear the needs of those people that you have crafted us and gifted us to be able to impact with the gospel of Jesus Christ. God, thank you for an opportunity again to be here. In Christ's name, amen. I want to take you back to the early first century in 26, 26, 27 A.D., you have a man named Augustus Caesar, and he begins what is known as the Roman Empire. He ruled over that empire for roughly 40 years, and then for around 360 years, 460 years from that time, you have Roman influence, you have Roman dominance. And, and during this time, although there was lots of things that we could look upon the Roman Empire and say this is something you should not do, one, things, one of the things that they did establish is something called Pax Romana. This is Latin for the peace of Rome. And, and during this Pax Romana, during this peace of Rome, you had, among many other things, you had a shared coinage, you had a shared language, you had safe seas, you had safe road travel which helped if you were a person of commerce, which helped if you were a person on some kind of personal or religious pilgrimage. And, and this also helped, and for purposes today, this is our focus, it also helped for the spread of the gospel. 
God uses all things to his glory. Scripture tells us this, that God uses the good, the bad, the in-between to his glory. And one of the things he used during this half-millennium reign of the Roman Empire was this safe travel. Particularly if you're a Roman citizen or you were under the protection of a Roman citizen, you could travel without fear of abuse. You could travel without fear of being left on your own. You could go around the world, into the known world, around the Mediterranean Sea, all the way west to Rome, east into what we call the Middle East, south into Africa, north into the areas of Turkey, etc., And one of the men that took advantage of this, his name is Paul. If you look at this map, some of you find this familiar. If you have a Bible in the back, you find all those maps in the Bible. Have you ever paid attention to these? You see those arrows and all the ways he traveled by sea, by land. This is in part possible because of the Pax Romana. He was able to travel. Now, estimates show that these travels alone, not counting others that might not have been recorded in the text, this, he traveled over 10,000 miles by foot or by boat. Over 10,000 miles, the Apostle Paul traveled, 10,260, somewhere in that range. Over 10,000 miles, this man traveled. This is a man who had a passion for reaching the lost. He was Jewish, and God called him into that people, and God called him out of that people, not to leave behind his heritage, but to take his heritage and know that this is what led the way to Jesus Christ. And then he says, I've been called to reach the Gentiles. And so you can see all of those arrows pointing away from Jerusalem, pointing away from this Judean holy land, as we would call it, and traveling to the people of Gentile nature. And he would begin going by synagogue to synagogue, these places of Jewish worship, and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ there. And then he would go into homes and he would talk to people on the streets and he would tell them about Jesus. Jesus told his disciples, his followers, to do this. And Paul, referring to himself as the last apostle, the last one to see Jesus in the flesh miraculously, even after he'd ascended to heaven, Jesus called this man to do exactly what he called the disciples to do. We find this in Matthew, we find this in Acts, and in Acts, this is most clearly stated where Jesus, before he ascends, tells his disciples that Paul will later join at this point. He says, I want you to go into Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the utter ends of the earth. And one of the things we take very seriously here at Rabbit Creek Church is we understand that that commission, that that call, we inherited it. As the disciples of Christ, the followers of Christ, we inherit this, inherited this challenge, this commission. And so what you've been hearing over the past few weeks, as you'll continue to hear into the coming weeks, is that Rabbit Creek Church takes seriously, takes seriously the challenge, the call of Jesus Christ to go into our Jerusalem which is our anchorage, to go into our Judea, which is the state of Alaska, to go into our utter ends, which is globally, and to go into the Samaria, for arguing purposes, we call that the lower 48. (laughs) Take it as you will. (laughs) This is a great opportunity for us to pour into the people of Christ, and you've heard us talk about the ways which we have served in Mexico, right here through the Community Pregnancy Center. You're going to hear about Liberia. You're going to hear about the upcoming journey to Cambodia to reach the people there. These are great opportunities you can invest in financially. These are opportunities you can invest in through prayer. And these are opportunities you can invest in through going. Now, I want to go back to the text here just, just for a little bit and listen to these words out of Acts. We're just going to hit a few verses And notice how God uses the Pax Romana, and notice how God even uses persecution to spread the gospel. Begin in chapter 8 of Acts, halfway through verse 1, just after Saul has given his approval, basically, to the killing of Stephen. Quickly, the tide turns. On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Sound familiar yet? Godly men buried Stephen and mourned deeply for him, but Saul began to destroy the church. Going from house to house, he dragged off men and women and put them in prison. Those who had been scattered, check this out, 
preached the word wherever they went. Persecution, namely the death of Stephen, has led people, the people of Christ, to go. And they didn't just go and put their tail between their legs. They went and they preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. They looked upon this as an opportunity, in other words, a blessing, even though they're being persecuted. One chapter over, Acts chapter 9, the, the scripture says this, Then the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace and was strengthened, living in the fear of the Lord and encouraged by the Holy Spirit, it increased in number. So not only did Jesus use persecution, but Jesus uses, uses peace. And here's why I believe we get this from the context of the verse, and that is the church needed a time of stability. Because if a church only experiences persecution, they're on the run or they're hiding all the time. But now there is a peace. This particularly took place uh, around 200 plus years later when Constantine becomes a Christian Roman emperor and they have another time of peace. But the Christian faith is growing. Chapter 13, the word of the Lord spread through the whole region. Chapter 16, as they traveled from town to town, they delivered the decisions reached by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem the people, for the people to obey. So the churches were strengthened in faith and grew daily in numbers. So we see persecution, we see peace, and we see teaching. We see as we looked in chapter 8, we found that the disciples, the, the original disciples, minus one plus another, and the deacons, Stephen and others, Stephen no longer alive, Philip and others are. And we see that these people were doing the will of God, and these people were sharing the teachings with the other churches. So the churches were not blindly trying to figure out what to do. They actually had teachings from the founders of their faith. Chapter 16, after Paul had seen the vision, he got ready and at once, at once to leave for Macedonia concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. So one thing we see here that's so important, and we need to hold on to this as we, as I have said, and have inherited this call, this charge, is this. They were spread by persecution. They were spread by peace. They were spread by teaching. And they, as they were, they were spread, they, as they were spread out, they went under the power of the Holy Spirit. In other words, Paul didn't just say, well, God, I'm just going to somehow throw a dart at the map. I, I saw a commercial recently where a, a husband blindfolds his wife and she throws a dart. And wherever the dart lands, that's where they go on vacation. I want to try that sometime, Von Dekay. I think that sounds really cool. Uh, but this is not Paul's strategy for missions. He doesn't do this and throw a dart. What he does, he says, Holy Spirit, where do you want me to go? And led in this vision, he goes to Macedonia. This is a wonderful thing. And so God is using books in here, Colossians, Ephesians, Galatians, Philippians. Why do these books bear those names? It's because Jesus used these people. The Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit dwelled in these men and these women as they spread out through the Mediterranean region and letters were written to these churches who were founded. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let me take you back to Matthew. This is when Jesus first gives that very clear statement of what they are to be up to as we are to be. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. I love the charge in the middle, and we're going to get there as we have been, but I want, to, I want you to notice the bookends. And these bookends of the text, as I'm calling them, are so crucial to us because sometimes as we set off to go overseas, sometimes as we go into our own city, we get nervous. Am I going to be able to say the things I need to say? Uh, are my feeble hands able to do the work that I, I'm called to do? I'm going to have the great opportunity to, to serve, serve as one of the chaperones on the youth trip coming up. And as far as I know, we're going to be doing some kind of probably construction project, give or take. Um, I told Corey uh, that I'm going to be the guy that, like, brings the stuff in so that other people can build. 
Uh, I'm going to be the person that tears stuff down so other people can build it. Uh, hopefully going to Houston where there's been flooding and send me in to tear the stuff down so other people can make it look pretty. These hands do not do construction very well at least. We all have gifts. We all have talents. But we have more than this. This is where the bookends come in. Jesus began this charge with this. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. And he's the one that's going to send them out. And so if you're going with his name, if you're going under his authority, you have all the power you need. I mentioned the Pax Romana. If you had the seal of Rome, you could go anywhere you needed to go, and no one dare mess with you. We have so much more than the peace of Rome. We have the seal of Jesus Christ. He is with us. All authority has been given. Therefore, go. Notice the therefore. I've given you all authority I, because I have it. Therefore, go. And then, I love this. Just in case you've already forgotten what he said, the last book in there. He says this, and I will be surely I am with you always, how far? To the very end of the age, to the utter ends of the earth. Everywhere you go, I am with you. I am with you. And so we have great opportunities as Rabbit Creek Church to go where Jesus leads through the power of the Holy Spirit. And he is with us as we go. And we have been given clear directions on how to do this. And then he says, I'm with you the whole time. So we're going to have an opportunity now to share as Pastors Corey and Ron, if you gentlemen would come up and join me. Uh, these, these two men have really had a passion to serve the people of our community. Uh, and very specifically, uh, we're going to talk about a way in which uh, we have a great opportunity to reach out in a different location and we locations as we move forward. And just a little bit of history real, quick, real quickly on that. Some of you know this, some of you don't know this. But for years, our church had a vision, had a goal of having additional space here. And for many reasons, if you want to know more about them, talk to you later. I don't have time to unpack those. Uh, but we, we've been unable to do that. And in the journey of this, God says, I've got, another, I've got another great opportunity for you about two and a half miles down the road. And out of that came our, what we call our 12100 coffee shop, which also hosts our Huffman campus, which is going to be meeting there at 11 o'clock today. And that is the first step in our campus multiplication. And we're going to talk about how that is going, and we're going to talk about the way into the future. And that's where Pastor Ron steps into this journey, and you're going to hear from them. And so I want to pray that God would speak through all of us now and give, give attention to God as he speaks through these gentlemen as we share what God is doing here at Rabbit Creek Church. And by Rabbit Creek Church, I don't just mean right here in this building, but across this city. And that's our vision. That's our goal. God, we love you and thank you for today, and I pray that you would continue uh, to speak clearly, that you would help us to be those, as those who are called unto your purpose and answer that purpose. God, give us courage, help us to know where you are and what you're doing, and help us to follow. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So I want to start with the most known, and we'll go more into the unknown. And it's fun to be in both. I like to have the unknown. I like to have the known. Uh, Corey, which hat do you have on right now? You got, you got several. <laughs> I think this is officially Huffman Campus. Okay, Huffman Campus yeah. hat. I, I say that because Corey is our pastor of students, and in addition to that, he's a campus pastor of Huffman Campus, as well as the manager of the coffee shop over there. So he's got a lot of responsibility. And I wanted to ask Corey, and all of you can hear this response, uh, what do you see as the goal of the Huffman Campus? Not 1200 Coffee Shop, that's a different journey we've talked about already, but the Huffman Campus that meets there, what's your goal there and how does our church really make that happen? Sure. I think we started um, almost a year ago mm -hmm. now with a goal of reaching a demographic that we felt like that <coughs> campus could do really well. Not that that demographic was welcome or didn't fit here, but that we thought fit really well. And that demographic was that, um, that younger singles up through about the birth of kids uh, and then empty nest adults, um, primarily because uh, just a pragmatic reason. There's not a really good kids program option there. We don't really have the room to do that well, and I happen to be pretty passionate about the one that's led here for some obvious reasons. Um, kind of married to the children's <coughs> pastor, if you didn't yeah. know that. 
And, and so we started looking at how do we do this and what does the music look like? And, and interestingly enough, those two age groups both really seem to respond to um, the sort of indie rock coffee shop style music that works really well there. And, and we watched those couple of things grow expecting that the campus at Huffman would have the opportunity to reach people who either had never walked into a church or hadn't walked into a church in a long time. Um, you were a part of a book study with us. In fact, I think you picked the book um, um, by a guy named yes. Alan Hirsch called The Forgotten Ways. And in The Forgotten Ways, Alan Hirsch talks about the fact that people feel welcome where they know the rules. And in our community of Anchorage, one of the places where our people know the rules is coffee shops. Um, we have more coffee shops per capita than Seattle. If that sounds like <laughs> a terrible place to build a coffee shop, were it not for the fact that we wanted a place where our people knew the rules, it might be the case. But we've seen people walk into that coffee shop um, and, and feel welcome and feel comfortable and know what was expected of them. And as such... Um, have barriers down to the gospel that they may have, they may have erected the moment they walked in here. Um, you and I were in a, in a hospital room just a couple of days ago, and I watched a lady say, um, I am so angry with God, and these things have happened in my life, and I told God that I was done, and I had walked out of a church, and I hadn't walked back in. And then she looked at the two of us and said, you need to know that I came home, and I told my son, um, I went to this new coffee shop the other day and described to him 12100, and he looked at me and said, Mom, you were at my church. <laughs> <laughs> and she went, at what? <laughs> and he said, yeah, you were at my church. And she said, you know, I don't know where God and I stand, but I will tell you that when I get there, and I may be there, that that's a place I want to go check out. Um, and it made the hairs on my arm stand on end to know that... Um, we are the body of Christ, and this church building is a powerful thing, and it is an incredible opportunity, an incredible tool, and I don't discount it for a minute, but when we as the body of Christ can step out of this building and still be the church, I think it's awesome, and, and that is the primary goal for our Huffman campus. It is to be the church in a way that can embrace our community in, in, a, in a way that they can understand and engage with. I don't know. So I've known Corey since 2005. We've worked together, and it's been great to see how God continues to use him in a wonderful way, and it's a blessing to have him in many roles, and particularly on Focus Today, the, the Huffman Campus pastor of that. I've known Ron since 2009, I think it is, give or take, and it's, it's been fun to see our relationship grow and then transition into a different type of relationship as well, because we began as gym buddies, and still are that gym buddy. In fact, we were on the ellipticals next to each other this morning. Uh, we, we, we really bonded that way first. And, and as we continued to journey through life together, uh, God really continued to pull on his heart and mine is in the same way as how, how we can be partners, not in just the, the gym buddies, but in, in church. What's that look like? And uh, we've been in a small group and prayer and great opportunities for that. And through that time, the Holy Spirit just really worked upon Ron and uh, as you heard me say, Pastor Ron, uh, last year we uh, ordained him to the gospel ministry, and we praise God for that. And we've been praying, what does that look like? And, and part of what that looks like is through our campus multiplication, and Ron being part of that, what we're going to be calling our North Campus and, and what that's going to look like. We don't know all the details yet. We're working on that, and Ron's going to share a little bit. But help us know a little bit, what's, what's, the, what's the DNA of that look like? What, what's the goal of, of North Campus? Well, I think, uh, I think the goal is, is to meet the people, uh, meet uh, the people where they are. There's a, a wide variety of people that are going through challenges and a certain level of brokenness and, and economic, relational, societal type challenges that ordinarily wouldn't find their way out to Rabbit Creek South here. And so uh, I know one, you and I had shared a pretty profound conversation one day and that you just felt... Uh, call to really help those in need mm -hmm. and that maybe uh, you weren't necessarily equipped to do that in this area mm -hmm. and that was also a need that I really felt that I was called to do so it's uh, ever since then I know that the model of this church is is helping equip people to live for Christ in their everyday life and so how do we reach those how do we reach those that ordinarily wouldn't come here and I know through some of my business endeavors and some of the career things that I do I've 
worked with that population for the last few years, and that's been to offer a safe forum or panel or opportunity for people just to come and, and talk openly about their challenges, uh, their issues, uh, their brokenness, and feel safe enough to say that I have, today's not just the best day. You know, and, and I'm, a, I'm, I'm one that can openly say that not every day is a good day. But I know that through the redeeming blood of Christ wow. and through God's unconditional love and mercy, it's going to be all right. And so we want to initially start off by starting with a small group in the north side of town and uh, offer that place where people can come as they are. And uh, those that have gotten through some of those challenges and barriers to share with others and give encouragement and hope that through each other, lifting each other up, that, th that everything will be all right. And they can help each other out. So we're going to initially start with a small group, which will be multi-purposeful. Multi uh, and that's to uh, just allow people to, to talk about things. With, and whether it be in through uh, a book study or a Bible study or just a support group. And let that be the catalyst to directing people into a place of worship. Praise God. And it's... As you said, a great opportunity for us to reach into a different demographic that we, ha we haven't really reached. One of the things that I love about Ron is his vulnerability and honesty, as he mentioned. And I know that, that, that we, I'll, I'll put us in a somewhat of a stereotype, uh, so forgive me for that. Uh, but I think a lot of us wear our, our hurt on the inside and don't necessarily talk about it openly. We've got things going on that we don't deal with, at least openly. Uh, sometimes it looks like we have it together when we don't. And one of the things Ron said is he's able to work with those people who very honestly say, I don't have it together. And uh, my, my life's not rosy right now. And, and that's a great opportunity. And this is going to be a way you can plug in as well. Because yeah. some of you, as we speak right now, as he was just speaking, you felt the Holy Spirit tugging your heart saying, hey, this is where I can plug in. Um, this is a good way that you can plug in. This is, this is going to be a ground level starting new and fresh. Now we're a year in to this. We're not even started here yet. God already has started, and, and we're going to get started, and we're excited about that. And so, uh, Corey, you shared about the, uh, the woman in the hospital, oh, which is, again, gives me chills. This is amazing. I mean, she, she was literally, again, talking about not hiding it, but opening it. She just outright said, uh, standing there, that she's been away from God, and, and she, she's mad. She's like, what's going on? My, my son's sick, and this doesn't make sense. And I love the vulnerability there. I love the honesty. I also love the check to say, oh, God, give me something to say. Help me know what to say right, right. now. And, and God came through, thankfully, on that. Um, but other, other than that, in addition to that, what are some other highlights of what's been going on at Huffman Campus? I think probably um, the, the thing that has been the most encouraging to see is actually a transition. So we started... January of last year with about 25 people who met at my house um, to sit around and talk about where we're going and where we're going to be and, and what are we going to do and how are we going to do this. And, and those people made a commitment to, to step out of this comfortable place um, and do something that was difficult. Um, and, and what's really interesting is to watch those people begin to make the transition back here um, not because things aren't working there, but because, frankly, we need the space. Um, you know, I, 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 there's a couple of them in this room right now, and they've been gracious about it. Um, they've, been, they've been just beyond kind to kind of look around and realize, uh, we're kind of running out of seats. I guess it's time for me to step in back here and to, to see them s step out, grow something, and then, and then watch it grow on its own. We had, um, we had 52 folks there. Uh, last week in Praise a room God. that comfortably seats about 65, um, <laughs> which is cool and kind of its own issue. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, so pray about that. But um, watching the, the faces change to people that actually see that as their campus, as their community, and see themselves as part of Rabbit Creek as a whole, but, but walk in looking for those faces to be together and to pray together um, is just fantastic it's exciting to see and to see them begin to to step up into leadership roles we added um you know a year ago when we we wrote down our volunteers um for the volunteer lunch that's coming up today um 
none of the folks on that list were exclusively Huffman campus folks because they were, they were folks who had come out of the Hillside campus to make Huffman campus happen. Just a couple of weeks ago when we sat down and wrote out the list of who our volunteers were for Susanna to do that mail out, I was listing Huffman campus people who had come to Rabbit Creek through Huffman campus and now are serving there. And, and to watch that campus mature to the point where um, it, it has its identity and it, and it sees itself as part of Rabbit Creek and as part of the Church of Christ overall, but, but also um, there's some people who walk in looking for one another and, and looking to pray together on a Sunday morning who, as much as it'll be fun to say it, when we do our big May event and pull these two campuses together to serve, uh, you guys are going to have some new folks to meet and that's going to be awesome. That is. One of the things that we talk about is the phrase that we've said around here for years is uh, we, we count people because people count. And one of the things that we have seen as a goal for our church for, for years um, is to get past that, that 400 threshold. Of <laughs> he made a what beeline in the world? for you. Yeah. <laughs> you were a <laughs> <laughs> Almost got in the eye there. Um, the, the 400 people. And uh, for the last several weeks, we have, we've had over 400 people. And that is because we have said we want to do more. And God said, let's do this. And so one of the ways we've seen that happen is through the Huffman campus. And that's an amazing thing. And we're going to continue to see God add to the number. I want, you, I want you to hear another number. I don't have specific detailed numbers. And I think it's even lower than this. But at high estimates, less than 10% of your city goes to church. Less than 10% of people in Anchorage go to church. There's a need for more places for people to worship. There are churches that have been serving God faithfully for years and years, and some of them have people in them, some have very few people in them, but less than 10% have of our people uh, go to church. And so if you ever ask, why in the world would we have cult uh, campus multiplication? Why would we try to reach out down the road <laughs> two and a half miles? Why would we try to reach out, I always laugh in Alaska terms, 20 minutes away is like hours and hours away. Uh, people just won't drive that far to church. And so we're going to take church to them, uh, which is a great thing. So speaking of church to them, uh, Ron, what do you see as, as more of the future? If you, you were to look, you were to look years ahead and say, this is what happened, and this is what North Campus is, is, has accomplished, what, what do you see as a goal for there? Well, first I'd like to uh, just reinforce and piggyback on the fact that 10% it was stunning. Mm -hmm. It was stunning to hear that. So it's just uh, com completely has driven us even more so to start a campus in, uh, on the northern side of town. Um, we initially think that uh, being that it's on the northern side of town, it's going to be a, a rather diverse congregation and uh, people from all ethnic, societal, and relational backgrounds mm -hmm. that will all share one common denominator, one common thread, and that's just the love of God, Amen. belief of God, and the love of Jesus Christ. So we see that um, with offering uh, a place of worship there, uh, we also understand that not everybody is going to be in a broken place at that time, but others have gotten through those times, but uh, they have um, not necessarily have been able to get economically back into out of that geographical area, if you will. And so what we're really looking for is just that congregation there that uh, those that have been through some things can help those that are going through some things and, and understanding that um, we're all there to lift each other up. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've, I've seen it happen. I've seen it happening now. And it's just, as you said, there's just not those opportunities uh, so nearby. And, and now on the north side of town there, it's, uh, it's incredible. It's uh, kind of heart-wrenching sometimes to see so many challenges and so many, uh, so many issues that people are struggling with right now. And a lot of people, like you say, don't wear it as well as they may on, out in some of these other areas. But I think uh, any adult in here with a few, even just a few adult years, has experienced those things. And not everybody has that family support or that societal support that helps them get through. Mm -hmm. So I know that with a church body, it can do amazing things. And uh, God working through that church body, all things are possible. Amen. And so we see that... Uh, we see there being a, a church plant, and, um, and through that ministry, uh, we're hopeful that it'll help draw men on, uh, draw up all people on him. That's great. Yeah. And it's so exciting for me to think about the possibilities that God has. I can tell you, looking back at what God has done at Rabbit Creek Church Hillside, 
and what he's already doing at Huffman, there's some things we saw that, that we said, I think this is what God's going to do, and he's done it. There's other things we didn't see coming. And, and that's where faith steps in, and that's where we, we remember that Jesus says, all authority has been given to me, and I am with you always to the very end of the age. That's what Jesus is doing in, in an amazing way. Now, I've got to be up front. I've got to tell you what, what's going on here this day is the reason we're doing this is we, we feel that God's calling you to invest in that, for you to be a part of this. Uh, that's, that's why we're showing these videos. Th this is something that you make possible. God works through you as we do this together. Hear the purpose of our church again. Equipping people to live their everyday lives for Christ. If you haven't memorized that statement yet, memorize it. Equipping people to live their everyday lives for Christ. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 is where we get that, P Peterson's translation. He says, so here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Don't forget that. God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life. You're sleeping, you're eating, going to work, walking around life. By the way, my kids edit that and say going to school life. Take that and lay it before God as an offering. Memorize that verse. That's what we're doing here. Equipping people to live their everyday lives for Christ. And you're going to be equipped. I think about what's going on in our culture right now. Some people have experienced some very tough things. I think about the Me Too uh, kind of campaign going on. Different people stepping up and say, I've gone through this. It takes one person to say, I've gone through this. And other people step up and say, oh, I've gone through it too. And this is what Ron's talking about. Is this a place where someone says, hey, I've been there. I've gone through this. And, and some of you have gone through the same stuff. And, and you go to Ron and say, man, I've been there. I, I've been addicted. I've been hurt. I've been in a situation where I can now say, through the grace of God, I've overcome that. And this is your calling to step out on that. And online with that, in, in light with that, I want each of these gentlemen to share with you how you can pray and how you can support uh, the Huffman campus and the North, North campus. What does that look like, gentlemen, for how our people that are watching, that are here, they're going to be here at next service, going to be at the Huffman campus, how can we... And pray for you and support, support you and your ministries. Sure. So I think the, uh, <clears throat> the first request that I would have for you guys is pray for our leaders. Mm -hmm. Pray for the folks at Rabbit Creek Huffman who are stepping from a role of walking in new to a role of beginning to lead. Um, one of the interesting things that we're trying to figure out how to do, and, and really Huffman is sort of <coughs> this interesting blend. It's close. For a, for a second campus, and so we share some of those things. We share student ministries. We share children's ministries. Um, but pray for our adults as they figure out how do we step up and where do we step up and, and how do we partner in small groups with the Hillside campus and what are we doing. There's, there's a large extent to which um, if, if it sounds to you a little bit like we're figuring this out as we go, you're tracking. <laughs> um, so, so pray for our leadership as we work that through. Um, pray for space. Um, it, it is uh, a very real issue um, for us, and where do we go, and what do we do next, and, and how do we make the decision to, to how long do we hold this to its current size, and when do we let it grow, and, and all of those things. Um, pray for those guys. Um, you can pray for our volunteers who are currently working. Uh, it, is, it is one thing to show up here on a Sunday morning, and turn the lights on and turn the sound system on and go. And, and that's a lot of work for our volunteers who are here. And I am not minimizing that in the slightest. Um, but our volunteers at Huffman Campus show up on Sunday morning and convert a coffee shop into a worship set. And then immediately after service, they convert it back into a coffee shop. Um, it's a lot of work. Uh, so pray for them. And, and pray for their energy level and their drive to continue making that happen. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's, it's an exciting time. It is just frankly a lot of fun uh, to walk into on a Sunday morning and you are welcome to come and play um, if you get some time we'd love to have you come drink a cup of coffee with us come meet some of those folks if you walk out of here as first service folks and go drink a cup of coffee with those folks and meet some of those folks they would absolutely positively love that um, but yeah thanks cool uh, one of the things we also did strate strategically and uh, Josh wherever you are uh, thanks for doing this um, Josh, our newest pastor on staff, he and his wife Christina, uh, strategically uh, moved uh, into that area, uh, right off of Clatt near Johns Road in that area. And uh, so we, we have people strategically living uh, in that area as well, uh, and that's not accidental, that's on purpose. Um, that's 
intentionally where we come to, where can we find a house they're saying where can we find a house where we can do ministry right here and that by the way anybody been to that really cool new park i went there yesterday the big big rope climbing thing anybody come on raise your hand if you've been to that park someone's been, okay we've got grandparents right <laughs> been there i climbed yesterday and just to show off i hung by my knees upside down i got brag on myself there that was that was kind of cool um <laughs> don't try that uh, but we, we have people strategically planted in our community uh, to, to be a part of that ministry there. And so keep praying for that. Uh, Ron, uh, how can we uh, pray and support uh, you and uh, the, what's going to be the North Campus and already the team that you're forming to get that going, a small group that will turn into what God's got planned? Yes, Mark. I think uh, first and foremost, uh, I think you've already mentioned it a couple times that uh, there's a lot of people that have also been through some mm -hmm. challenges, some uh, rough patches, some adversity, and have gotten through. And there's nothing more inspiring and encouraging from having those type of individuals to go and share to a, a population or an area where they're presently in those certain circumstances. Uh, so we ask that and want to request and solicit the help of anybody that uh, would like to have that, share that passion and desire to help those. Uh, also, we uh, pray for strength, strength to uh, meet any and all opposition that may come from those diverse areas of people with different backgrounds and of different faith. And so that um, nothing opposes or hinders us from, mm -hmm. from helping those others. And, uh, and strength also that we can, you know, meet the needs of those people objectively. Uh, and maybe not so subjectively and because when you have the passion and the heart to uh, help people that are in those circumstances, it's, it's easy to attach to it. Mm -hmm. Attach to it and then sometimes it becomes your own. So we... Uh, uh, it's a challenge to go in those areas where there's uh, people are hurting and, and the ripple effect of those people hurting and their families hurting and seeing the, de the destruction of families and um, seeing that sometimes people in those, in those circumstances that are experiencing uh, some setbacks and things are making some bad choices and those bad choices inevitably um, lead to life of lawlessness, sin, strong, uh, footholds that develop into strongholds. So, uh, it's, uh, I, we foresee that there's going to be some challenges, but we have already uh, have some members here committed that I've gotten to know very well that are just prayer warriors. And so we understand that already presently there's opposition. We're praying that away. We ask for the church to continue assisting us in those prayers and continue to do that um, because the opposition does not want to see us go to that area of town and help right. so many others, so many people um, offer that, uh, the salvation of Christ. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, we're prepared to do that. And so if anybody, we look forward to hearing from anybody that might want to share in that, in that passion and uh, your continued prayers. Thank you. Please do that. Uh, I got to share one, one story on how God works. Ron and I were meeting at 1200 uh, to, <laughs> to, to, I love how that connects, yeah. <laughs> uh, to, to pray about what this looks like. And I'm, I'm, I like to face the door. That's just <laughs> that's my personality. Uh, and so I like to face the door. And in, in walks Pastor Rich, Reverend Rich. You saw him on the video. He's a man after God's own heart. He just really serves the Lord. And he walked in. And from that video, I learned his passion for some ministries here in town that I, I didn't know about until he shared on the video. And I said, Ron, we need to talk to this man. And so we walked over and talked to Rich. And out of that... He made connections right there. Uh, so there's a connection in the shop that holds our Huffman campus. Make a connection between two pastors sitting there. Now it's connected to people already working in the north side of town that we're going to continue to work with. And, and that's how God works. And it's an amazing thing. So here are three ways that you can help. Now one, you can pray. You can pray. And I, I entreat you, please do that. Put it on the top of your list if you make a list. If not, put it in your brain. Say, this is what I'm praying for. Second, you can volunteer to help. You can say to these gentlemen, how can I help? Whether that's actually being a part of that or it's helping get ready for that. Talk to these gentlemen and say, how, how can I help? How can I be a part of this? Also, how can you step up to the plate financially and say, you know what, I'm going to really support this church at a higher level as a, as a church broadly so we can continue to serve here 
We can continue to serve there, and we can see what it looks like there. This, this, is, this is not an inexpensive endeavor, and, and we're, we're going to say, God, you're going to provide for this. You're going to make this happen because we believe, John chapter 15, verse 5, when he remains in us, we remain in him, and his word remains in us. Ask what you wish, and it'll be done for you. We claim in that verse in this year of ask. And so next year is a year of show. I can't wait to bear fruit and talk about how God did this. We're going to be sitting back here next year and saying, hey, God, look what, look what, look what God has done. And then and who knows what? what what's, what's next? What's next? There's always going to be something next around here. We're not going to sit on our laurels. We're not going to do that. If you missed that sermon a few years ago, I didn't know what a laurel was. I thought it was your hind end, but it's not. It's your victory wreath. So we're not going to sit on those things. We're not going to sit on those. The true story. True story. It's probably online. Someone go look it. I don't know what sermon it was. I actually had no idea what a laurel was. I actually thought it was hind end, uh, but then I looked it up. Oh wow, that's actually something you win, right? So we're not going to sit around our laurels, whatever you want to laurel call, laurel call a laurel today. I, I want you to know that we're not going to sit back and say, okay, we accomplished it. it. This is not a church to get bored in. This is a church we're going to be always moving forward. So if you're going to get worn out, heads up, get worn <laughs> out with us. This is going to be a great endeavor. And this is the way you can greatly impact this kingdom that God is setting forth on this earth. Because his kingdom is not this earth. His kingdom is heaven. And Jesus brought his kingdom here. We just sang those words, didn't we, Josh? Yeah. Bring your kingdom here. And that's partly through what we're going to do as a church, as a body of Christ. So what I want you to do is, is join me in prayer as we start that. And then Josh is going to come up and we're going to sing our hearts out as we worship some of these songs and praise God for what he's doing. God, we love you. Thank you so much for what you're doing in this church. And just keep it up, God. And call people out to do what you've called them to do. In Jesus' name, amen.